Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we will be discussing the question Russian doll envelopes. In this question, we are given a 2D array of integers envelopes where envelope i represents the width and the height of an envelope. One envelope can fit into another if and only if both the width and the height of one envelope is greater than the width and height of the other envelope. We need to return the maximum number of envelopes we can Russian doll, that is, we can put inside each other. Note that we cannot rotate the envelopes. In the first example, we can see that we can Russian doll three envelopes by putting 2, 3 into 5, 4 and then putting 5, 4 into 6, 7. And in the second example, we can see that all the envelopes are of the same width and height. So we return one as we cannot Russian doll any of these. So let's first see what the problem is all about and how we can solve this. So suppose this is the example that is given to us and we need to find how many envelopes can we Russian doll. So as we know that we can Russian doll three of the envelopes and how we can do that is we have these three envelopes 2 comma 3, 5 comma 4 and 6 comma 7. We will put 2 comma 3 into 5 comma 4 as the height and the width is smaller and similarly putting this envelope into 6 comma 7. So let's bring our attention only to the width of these envelope first and we see that they are in an increasing fashion. We can easily make this array in an increasing fashion by sorting this array based on the width. So what we can do is we can directly sort the array on the basis of width and then we will get this array. So now all we need to take care of is the height of these envelopes. They must be in the increasing fashion and no two envelope should have the same width. Now let's bring our attention to the second value which is the height of these envelopes. We will discuss a brute force approach as to how we can find an increasing subsequence made from these second digits. That is in this case becomes 3447. We know that we can put 2 comma 3 into 5 comma 4 but we cannot put 5 comma 4 into 6 comma 4 as the two heights are equal. So we need a strictly increasing subsequence. So we cannot include 6 comma 4 into our result. In order to better understand this problem, let us change the 6 comma 4 to 6 comma 5 and also add one more envelope with the width as 7 and height as 6. So now the result should be 4 envelopes because as you can see in the diagram, we can put in 4 envelopes in Russian doll fashion. Now with this new array, the increasing subsequent result should be 3, 4, 5, 6 which we can see in the diagram also. Now let's see how we can find this subsequence using a brute force approach. We will be using an array. Instead of the index, we have written the width and the height so that it is much more clear. The value at the 0th index of this array will always be 1 because the result will be at least 1. Now, what we need to do is for every value starting from 5 comma 4 till the end, we need to compare the height with all the previous heights in the array. So we will be comparing 4 with 3 in this case, finding out what is the maximum value that we can get. In this case, we can get 1. So we will put 1 plus 1 which is 2 at this particular index. Now we will move to the next value that is 6 comma 5 and we'll compare this 5 with all the previous value that is 3 and 4. As it is still a greater value, we'll find the maximum of these values which is 2. We'll add 1 and put 3 over here. And now we come across this 7 and we compare the values with 3, 4 and 5. The answer should be 4 over here but we have written 3 because we need to also take into consideration the width of the envelope. The width of the envelope should not be the same. Only when the width is not same and the height is greater, then only we will be considering the value present at that index. In this case, the last value that was considered was 5 comma 4. So we take the 2 add 1 to it and put that at the index of 6 comma 7 and similarly we will move till the end wherein we have 7 comma 6 we compare this 6 with all the values the last value that it consider is 6 comma 5 both the height and the width 
are greater. So we put 3 plus 1 that is 4 at this index. At the end we can find the maximum value stored in this array and then we can return it. Now it's time to code this approach. So as discussed, we need to first sort the envelopes array based on the width of the envelope. So we'll use the arrays.sort over here. Now that the array is sorted based on the width, we saw that we need a array in order to store the intermediate results. So we'll have this array which we'll call dp. And now we'll have a max length variable which we talked about. Also, we discussed that at the zeroth index, the value should be one because there will be at least one envelope. Now we'll start our loop from the first index till the end of this envelope array. We know that minimum one envelope will be returned. So at each place, the minimum value will be one. Now for all the envelopes before this envelope, that is from zero till i, we will loop and we will update the dp of i based on the condition that the width of the two is not equal and the height is greater than the envelope present at jth index. So we will write those two conditions. So this is the first condition where the two envelope width should not be equal and now this is the second condition wherein the height of the envelope at ith index should be greater than the envelope at jth index. And now we find the maximum. So the value at dp of i will be either dp of i or dp of j plus 1. Once we have found the value at dp of i, we'll update this max length variable with the maximum value of either the max length or the value at present at dp of i. So this max length will contain the maximum value in dp array. At the end, we just need to simply return this max length variable. So the coding part is done. When we run this code for all the test cases, it is successful. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity is O of n square, while the space complexity is O of n. This solution is good, but how can we reduce the time complexity further? We can only apply an optimization approach in this for loop or more precisely by removing this for loop, which is going in the worst case up to n. We can devise a method wherein we can bring it down to log n. Now the concept that we will be using over here is called binary search. It can be a tricky at first, but once you get to know the idea behind it, it will be much more useful in further questions as well. So do take your time to understand this properly. So let's see what the approach says with the help of an example. So this was the example that we discussed earlier and we had sorted the array based on the width only as we're doing the brute force on the height value. So now let's consider we have an array like we had before and instead of storing the count of the envelope that we can fit in till that envelope, we will be storing the value in this array. So we will first store 3. Now we move to 4 and as 4 is greater than 3, we store that and similarly 5 and then also 7. But here the flow is wrong as we cannot put in envelope 6 comma 5 into 6 comma 7 as the width are equal. So where we went wrong, as we were putting in values into this array, we were trying to find the smallest value greater than the current value that we are trying to put in. And as we got no values, we were putting the values at the end of the array. But since we are not taking into consideration the width factor in this array, we have no idea that we cannot put in 7 after this 5. Now, just for a thought, if we sort the height in descending order, when the width is same, we get 7 before this 5 and the 5 won't be considered when 7 is already there. So in that case, we'll first put in 7 and now when we'll try to find a position for 5, it will point us to the same index which was of 7. And when we put this value, we still have a count of 3 only and then we put in 6 which can very well be placed as it is higher than 5. And when we count the length of this array, we have 4 values in this array and the result is also 4. Now when we are trying to find the smallest value that is 
higher than the current value that we are trying to put in, we can use binary search for that as the data in this array will be sorted. And when we are using a binary search, the complexity goes down to log n and hence the complexity of overall program goes down to n log n. We'll see two ways to apply binary search first by applying our own binary search and then by using the inbuilt function given by Java. So there is a slight difference in the two. So it's time to code that. There are two major differences that we saw that firstly we need to sort the array based on the height also. And we are sorting that on the base of descending order only when the width of the two envelopes are equal. So if the width of the two envelopes are equal, then we will sort the array based on the width in descending order. Otherwise it is based on the width. Now the next difference that we will see is over here. So we'll remove this and we don't need this dp1 as well. We'll have this max length which will be initially zero now. And we will loop from zeroth index. We will try to find a position for every value of the envelope or more precisely for its height. So find the index of height of envelope at ith position is what we need to do over here. So we'll have an index and we'll have a binary search. In binary search we need these many parameters. We need the array, we need the start, we need the end and then we need the value which we need to find and that value in this case will be envelope of i at 1. Now once we have this index, we'll put the value that is envelope at i in 1 at this index and if the index and the max length are equal, that means we have added one more value into this array. So we need to increment this max length and at the end we will be retaining the max length. Now let's implement this method which is binary search. It will return an index variable. It will take a dp array, will take array, there will be a start value, there will be an end value and there will be a target that we need to find. Now we know that a basic binary search is a start is less than end, we'll find the mid value. If the value at this mid is equals to target, then we have already find the index and we directly return the mid, else if the mid is greater than the target we make end as mid and in the else part we make the start as mid plus one at the end we return start this completes the coding when we run this code it ran successfully let's submit this it got submitted successfully. The time complexity in this case becomes O of n log n while the space complexity is still O of n. Now we do not need to implement our own binary search. We can use the inbuilt binary search function. So we'll implement over here. So the index over here will now become arrays dot binary search which take the same number of arguments. Now this returns a negative value when the value is not present. So if the index is negative then we'll change that into positive by adding plus one and at the end we need to return the index. So by using this inbuilt function also we can solve this problem. Now this question is an extension to one of the lead code problems wherein we need to find the longest increasing subsequence and what we did by finding the increasing sequence of the heights is what primarily the longest increasing subsequence problem is. So we can have this much of code into a method and put this code into the longest increasing subsequence and still get this right result. So do try to apply the logic and the approach that we have learned in this question into longest increasing subsequence. This is the problem that I was talking about which is longest increasing subsequence. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one.